Okay, so we had another network special. This time it was the final chapter of The Shield. Which I thought we had fast lane. Wasn't that the last time The Shield was gonna have a match? But it's in the place in Moly. They did a couple matches beyond, you know, the, the Shield taking on the, the Baron Corbin Legion of Doom. So we got to see Elias and Finn Balor. And decent match. You can tell us very much it's a house show with some, some lighting done to it. I loved the fact that they put the announcers at a table right next to the ring. So they did a spot where Finn Balor was, you know, on the on the apron, teasing, falling backwards through the table. And you know, they all spread out. And I was like, well, yeah, because if he falls back, he's falling through the table right into your lap. So of course, you know, Lama he straw cradle. Finn retains his championship. Makes sense. Decent match. Ember Moon and Bailey take on the Riot Squad, who is also breaking up as a sanity. So, you know, Liv Morgan kind of got involved a little bit, so she got ejected. As it ended up being pretty much, you know, Sarah Logan and uh, Ruby Riot in this one. Sarah Logan was howling because, you know, Viking Queen while taking on the War Goddess and the Hugger. Again, not a bad match, very much, you know, house show sort of fair. Everyone hits the Eclipse, one, two, three. All right, so, so far, faces are winning. It's a house show. Proud tends to go home happy. Shield versus, again, Lashley, Corbin, and McIntyre. Uh, I know a lot of people were like, ah, we've seen this match a lot of times. It would have been cool since you've got three people who are healthy and one of them is in the possibility of the company to have done a Wyatt's match. You know, Wyatt's versus Shield would have been pretty sweet because we would have had the last match of the Wyatt's, the last match of the Shield, the last match of the Riot Squad, all in one big event. Of course, they let everyone hit their finishers. Everyone looked really good in this. You know, you can tell that Dean was like, this is my last match. I normally slam myself into the wall. Let's slam harder into the wall. And fantastic match. You can tell in this one he went all oh, out. This was Dean going. This is the, this is the last people are gonna remember me is of this match. And of course they do a sequence where it's coming towards the end. You get your spear. You get your stomp. You get your dirty deeds. He could score the pinball, and he's like, no. Triple bomb, do it. Shield bomb, finish it. One, two, three. But while they're doing this, the commentators are talking about Corey Graves is like, oh, I remember doing this with these guys. Renee talked about the, her first date with Dean. They actually did all these really great character building stories while also talking about the match. The way commentary should be. And it was really refreshing. If you haven't heard Michael Cole call a match when he doesn't have like Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon screaming in his ears watch him call a match and you go man you know what he's really good when he's not being yelled at by like nine people in a headset while trying to carry on two different conversations while calling while call a match of course Seth got to talk for a little bit because you know, it's his home stopping grounds and Moline Dean is you know He's barely holding it together. The crowd's saying, please don't go. And Seth's like, you think we didn't try that? And I was like, oh, that's good. Talked about the reason why he's champion is because of these, of these guys, of his brothers. And it didn't feel contrived. You can tell this is just raw emotion. They gave Dean the mic, and Dean kind of cut one of those. He's like, you know what? You see Seth? You work hard. You can do whatever you want to do. If they say you can't, you give him one thing, you say, no, the shield says that I can. And I was like, perfect. That's a, that's a great way to end this one of those. This is a guy who went from having matches where they, he had to with Sawzalls and Weed Whackers. And he went from that to being one of the biggest stables in the modern era of professional wrestling. 
to be a Grand Slam champion, to be in multiple WrestleManias, the main event, but in multiple WrestleManias, held all the major titles except for the universe. He didn't hold the universe. He probably could have. You know, headline shows was a workhorse, did everything you could possibly think they would ask him to do. Except for sign a contract for a million plus a year. But, you know, he's not going to be done wrestling. I know they mentioned it in one of the wrestling shows. He was watching the, the, the blood sport one, which is more closely in line to like a shoot fight with a wrestling aspect to it. And you can tell Dean's watching it going, I like this. I like the no ring ropes, just two guys kind of like shoot fighting a little bit, but there's still a work aspect to it. And it's the last time we're going to see Dean. I'm glad they gave him a network special. His chronicle was amazing. But he's tired of doing the weird hokey stuff, and, you know, I cannot say that I blame him. So whatever you do, Dean, I don't need to wish you well. You've got a strong work ethic. Whatever you set your mind to, you will achieve. 